Hey everybody, welcome back to Five Boys in a Business, a podcast where we talk about the business, the family, and the many shenanigans involved. You can catch us most Mondays around 10.30 or so on and, well, live, or any of the podcast channels like iTunes, Google Podcasts, Spotify. So check us out there as well if you don't get to watch us live. I'm Emily King. I'm Richie King. And uh, today is Richie's birthday. <laughs> Happy birthday. Thanks, babe. You're 49. 40, no. 42, 49, yeah. <laughs> Somebody actually believed you when you said that over the weekend. I don't remember who it was, but one of the kids. Obviously one of the one of the most gullible of the bunch. Yeah, so. Um, was also, it, was don't it, forget was to. Was it John? Might have been Johnny. Might have been Johnny. Yeah. Don't forget to check out the merch store, ASPCmerch.com, yep. where we have, now that it's getting colder, sadly so. Much colder. We have long sleeve shirts and hats and all kinds of cool stuff to wear um, as it gets cooler. Stocking hats are now in season. So, so. Um, yeah, I can't believe it's almost the end of October. Isn't it funny how the seasons, they seem to drag along and then they all, of a sudden, all of a sudden it's cold? Yeah, well, I'm still stuck in March and I think it's because COVID warped time. Right. And um, it just, because you didn't do any of the things that you normally, you normally would do. do. To make to like be your time markers so it's almost like you're still waiting to do those things and it's like wait that's already come and gone and we're going to be on a year of covid before six, we six know months. it it's like yeah. crazy well i mean even this fall too i mean no one went to the pumpkin patch really no one really did anything to go really prepare for halloween and now they're messing up halloween now so um we have to slingshot candy to the kids i'm and gonna throw get in their candy bags. at children i think <laughs> you beam them <laughs> oh pick that up put it in your bag you deserve it that's your mom's fault that's right that's right <laughs> lisa sitting there says happy birthday richie oh thanks thanks so much uh yeah so or you you're gonna have to get games. like a 50 foot pvc pipe slide it down and then there like blow dart right right like the, the have candy. some hand, hand sanitizer at the bottom when they when they clean their hands they can have it yeah exactly uh, well, they can have it on their belt, you know. I'm sure they have some hand sanitizer. I totally like the slingshot idea and just be like, catch it, here you go. Right. Um, do you remember when you were kids? It's not going to work for the one and two year olds. But did you ever, that's okay. <laughs> when you were kids, did you ever take apples and put them on a stick and whip them? Oh, yeah. Whip apples. People used to give apples and all kinds of stuff for yeah. Halloween. And they started scaring you. It's like when we put nails or something in the nails or poison and all kinds of stuff. But yeah, it's uh. So yeah. Yeah, the PVC pipe was was big. Some people are going to put individual bags on stakes, placed six feet apart in the front yard, so the kids can go do it. <laughs> I was like, don't you got to go contaminate the stakes? You go reload the stake with candy. I think I'm still. I'm going with. I'm throwing candy at children. Right. And if they catch it, it's your lucky day. Or I'll just hand it to them. You can't wear a mask over your mask. Apparently, that's not safe either. I was like, well, so all the superheroes now wear masks. <laughs> Since when does Batman have a surgical mask on? Oh, uh, gosh. Yeah. So, it's interesting. It's funny stuff. So it's the time we live in this year. This year. Hopefully this year. 2020 leaves and never comes back. You know, it's funny because I, I was I was telling Emily that I took uh, Calvin to the uh, ear, nose, and throat doctor the other day. And I've always been good since the masking mandate. You know, I always wear my pull-up gator and whatever. And I had my gator dutifully pulled up in place. And I get there and they say, would you please put this mask on? I'm like, dude, <laughs> you changed the rules, the mask rules again? Well, it's because they don't think the gators, they've shown that the gators don't work, dear. I know, but they say face covering. Oh, that's true. They don't Technically really, a they covering. Didn't really, they didn't really tell you They didn't you specify the co- type of covering. Yeah. So then I dutifully pulled down my gator and put the other mask on. Promptly bumped into a few walls because my glasses fogged up and I can't see what's going on. So. Yes. But anyway, we're, we're playing along as best so, we can. So um, what are your hopes for your birthday today? Um, I honestly am just thankful for another one. Um, thankful for my uh, health as I get older and um i think that's one of the greatest assets and one of the greatest gifts you can have as you age uh, there's so many people out there um that i know that that don't um through no fault of their own uh have health issues and and have to deal with those and in my in my opinion even at, as an almost 50 year old a relatively young age um so yeah very thankful about that so okay thankful to be able to spend it with you and the boys and and, and yeah lots uh, lots of blessings to go around Harris, what's your favorite dad memory? What do you actually think, Dad? Tell us what? about your actually. What do you about actually, what? That's just a scripted answer, Dad. Tell us what you actually think. About what? Your birthday. How it's all hellish and terrible. And <laughs> well, getting old pretty much does stink. Your joints stop working. <laughs> I was thinking this morning about running. I was like, I remember when I used to run. I was like, knees won't let me do it anymore. Can't really go work out. So, 
but that's it. I do notice as I get older though, things will, um, they just hurt for no reason. Like your hands, like my hands are stiff in the morning sometimes for absolutely no reason at all. Yep. And especially in the winter, I think my feet get stiff too. I have to get up and work it out in the morning. Well, you have to live a lot longer, so. Well, those are minor complaints. I get that. Yeah, those are minor. Harris, what's your favorite dad memory? There are so many, I'm sure. I don't know. Uh, probably a recent one is probably the one where his, <laughs> his fire pit that he spent a hundred dollars on that's supposed to not be smoky was smoky oh. a few weeks ago. <laughs> okay, this is a funny story. We have a, a solo stove, one of the thirty-inch Yukon models, and the solo stoves are uh, portable stoves. They're stainless steel, kind of like cylinders, and they're vented such that uh, they're supposed to be smokeless or not minimize smoke. And generally, it works. And I think what had happened was I'd used it before. A few things. I hadn't quite cleaned it out as well as I should have. So I think some of the vents may have, uh, the airflow may not have been great. The wood was probably less than 100% dry because it had been outside. And I did, ten I built a fire a little bit higher. It's supposed to be below the top so that you get that full vent action going. And um, so we built a fire one night and Emily's parents came over and I think Missy and Jim and the kids came over yeah. and we were all outside and the smokeless fire pit was choking everybody's day as they tried to uh, eat their, their dinner. So, uh, so yeah, it, in that particular case, it was not as smokeless as we'd like, but it was close. I still love it. The kids used it the other night. It looked like it worked yeah, great. The kids. Yeah. It's very easy to use safe. Yeah. And it's um, because it's portable. Um, you can move it. If you need to move it inside, you can. I think it's way less smoke than the old one we had. Oh, gosh, yeah. So. Yeah. Um, well, on Halloween, we're going to put it in the front yard, front driveway. So we're going to jump out, you know, from behind the bushes and yeah. slingshot the candy. Yep. Where's the candy? <laughs> there it is. <laughs> <laughs> Bink. Oh. Oh, gosh. So anyway, so yeah, that's, uh, yeah, there's a, a good stories with fire, so. A lot better stories than an adult with fire as there are you know, as a kid with fire. <laughs> yeah, fire. Yeah, young young men in fire for whatever reason they're attracted to it and it never ends well. No, nope. never ends well. Yeah, it's uh, you have some good stories about that. And kids, even with my kids, the boys, there is some weird. There's something about there's some it must be some genetic thing, genetic memory or whatever. Every one of my kids, when we built a bonfire, they'll stick a stick in it and let it get red hot, and then run around the yard with it with the smoke trailing. <laughs> Every one of them, they've all As done the that. Embers like falling yeah. off, hitting their friend in the yeah. face behind them. Yeah. They all do that, so it must be some some trait that has been handed tribal down. instinct. Yeah. So yeah. it's crazy. They do. They like to. They always like to do that. It is funny though how people are attracted. They still. That's a an activity that people still engage in and enjoy. It's kind of a throwback to sitting around fires. You mean? Yeah. You yeah. Know, the sitting, the communal aspect, and probably the the light that it gave during a time when that was the only light there was at night, because um, night was black. So. A way to sit around and visit. Yeah. Tell stories. Also for protection. Yeah. You know, fire was a means to protect yourselves against predators what what is he laughing about it's true <laughs> oh this is my life guys oh, this is so a dad thing isn't it Harrison? <laughs> yeah back in the day back in the bc days back they used day. to be protected by yeah. fire no dad <laughs> really <laughs> wait he needs to get out his book on um uh, what is the book you always talking about? Um, about the brain and like uh, archaeology and um, what's it <laughs> oh, called? Oh, uh, sapiens. Sapiens. Yes. Oh god. It's true. Last night, John made one of the funniest comments about this because he was like, <laughs> John, or John, I gave we for for reference. I got me and my fiance. We got uh, dad a uh, history book of whiskey. And while dad's opening, John's like, oh, yeah, it's probably a survival book. And I was like, yeah, John, for all the surviving that dad has to do, you know. So. No, well, we did. Jo Johnny and I, Johnny has a, Johnny and I have a, a cool history because we started watching this show called, this has been years ago, a Dual Survival. Right. And I would take him to gun shows and we'd look at knives and stuff. And we'd go in the backyard and try and make bow drill fires. And, and we would make things, you know, we would, it was just fun. It's just fun stuff. Right. But you, you get paracord and all that stuff. And it's funny because you go back and watch those shows now. And you go, this is the dumbest thing ever. And real quick, if you're <laughs> wet and it's 20 degrees outside, you're done. Oh, you can't gosh. make a fire. You're probably dead. You're probably not going to make it. I don't care what shows you watch or any of that stuff. Yeah. So that's always it. Lisa Sidnerson, where's the cake and ice cream? 
No cake and ice cream today. No, we, we had made, uh, we, Richie, yeah, we, yeah, we made pie because he's a uh, pumpkin pie fanatic. Well, we have a. Do you want, you want to tell a story? You go ahead. There's, there's an interesting story behind the pumpkin pie. When Emily and I were dating, um, the first uh, my the my birthday uh, when we first started dating, she said, "What do you want?" I was like, "Oh, I like pumpkin pie." So she made me a pumpkin pie, and I I, I can't remember if we had, I just took it home. I can't remember. I, I think I did took the whole thing home, and um, it was a Saturday morning, and I ate a quarter of it, and then I was you know I was like oh, that's pretty good. So I put it back, you know, half an hour later, I was like, "I'm gonna have some more." I basically ate the whole thing in the morning, <laughs> the whole the whole thing. So she calls me around midday, and she's like, "Hey, how was your cake?" I was like, "It was great. I ate the whole or the pie." I was like, "Great, I ate the whole thing." So. Well, yeah, because you did not have um, because you were raised Jehovah's Witness, you didn't celebrate birthdays. Well, we do all of them, my dad. But yeah, we true. didn't have birthday cakes, though. So. Right. So I was like bound and determined to make you something for your birthday. Yeah, it was good. Very so you good could start par- participating in said traditions. Yeah, that was. I a- also made you dye Easter eggs. Yeah, that first. Yeah, well, that was the next. Yeah, that was uh, the next year. I don't remember what we did for your birthday that year. Ah, uh, who knows? I don't remember. I think we went out to dinner. Probably. We went to Atback, remember? Because you and Lovett share a birthday, don't you? Yeah. So, yeah, that's right. We do. Love it, and I do. Yep, I remember, uh, yeah, God, so many years ago. Jeez. We have we have a questionnaire in the chat Yep. Um, from Lisa, and it's very obscure, but I okay. wanted to ask it. If you get time, she said, if you get time, ask Dr. King about declining cats. If it doesn't fit in, don't worry about it. Huge, in all caps, huge discussion on the Noblesville Chatter Facebook page. Our area vets still declawing. We've got five cats not declawed, and I just wondered what the viewpoint is. Oh, yeah, sure, absolutely. So declawing, I mean, is um, in, I think, in California, New York, maybe New York. Um, it's outlawed. I think it's outlawed. Um, it's got to be California. Or it's like, you know, it's got to be California. Yeah. Yeah. Um, in Indiana, we don't have um, such a rule. I think that people have different opinions on declawing. I think that um, if it's done correctly, then it um, I don't see it as a disservice to the animal. Um, there is The way I explain it to owners is that there's really no other way to declaw. You know, declawing is amputating the last digit of the um, patient. But if you do it correctly, then you minimize, um, if not negate, any sources of chronic pain, Mm. you know, that the patient may have. So there's different ways to perform that amputation. And if you don't do it correctly, then you can maim the animal forever, Mm. you know, or cause chronic pain forever. So um, it does need to be done a certain way. And I think that um, when clients or owners of cats call around to various practices and they are asking only a question like how much does it cost to declaw or do you declaw i think that um they can to some degree have misinformation because you're not comparing apples to apples and so you know the way we do a declaw procedure is we use um laser therapy and then we also use nerve blocks and we use depending on the size of the patient (coughs) post-operative and pre-operative pain control um and um yeah, I mean, I think that the the um, the pros and cons, you know, I mean, are what they are. I mean, I think that if you are not going to be able to spend time with your cat because they are destructive to you or to your house and that's destroying the human-animal bond, then I think declawing is appropriate so that you don't destroy the human-animal bond. Mm. And what good is it for the cat if you hate the cat right. because it's destructive? So I don't think that, that it's, a, it's a no-win for everybody then mm-hmm. involved. And people also have opinions about letting the cats then outside. Well, you're trapping an animal inside that is going to be destructive, and you have to be okay with that said destruction, although you can channel them to certain areas so that they can have an outlet, but it's still the, they're still going to destroy things. And I think right. for some people, um, that then destroys the human-animal bond, which then doesn't need to happen right. if you perform a declaw and you do it correctly. Um so yeah i mean there's just various opinions on it Hmm. i would say you know that um i'm not necessarily the younger the animal the younger the the patient the faster they recover so if you declaw a three pound cat that afternoon they are climbing the cage door so Hmm. they i just i i have a very difficult time wrapping my brain around how uncomfortable they are 
when they're climbing the cage door. Right. So they, they, you know, now, you know, and, and they, and we do use pain medication on them and we do make them extremely comfortable and they do have probably the, their surgical incision is probably three millimeters in size. Mm-hmm. So it's a really small hole that we create. And so I think that they're just, they do exceptionally well. The larger the cat, the more the cat weighs. If you're doing an adult cat, it definitely has to be done the right way mm-hmm. um, in order to prevent any type of ghost pain, you know, later um, in the patient's life or um, chronic pain. Is mommy's chief declawed? No. Uh-uh. No, but he's not, I mean, you know, he's, that's one of our clinic cats. He's not destructive. He has enough outlets, you know, right. in the clinic that he doesn't um, do that. But I think, you know, for older people, um, senior citizens who enjoy the company of a cat and the cat sits on their lap or in their arms and their skin is so friable that when they jump down, they just by accident without oh. any malice hurt the person. Um, and you just can't, you can't do that to the the senior citizen. I mean, from the standpoint of putting them at risk. Right. So um, I think in those instances, it it's, makes perfect sense, you know, to be able to protect the senior citizen. But yet the cat is not, again, if done correctly, the cat is not, does not suffer um, any long-term consequences right. um, or changes in personality. That's always a question we get. Will it change the cat's personality? You know, no, not, we haven't, you know, I've yet to see that happen. Hmm. Um, so there's anecdotal reports um, from clients that they'll say that, you know, my cat's personality changed post-operatively, but we don't have any research, nor have I experienced it as a veterinarian um, that that's the case. Hmm. So, yeah. Hopefully that answers your question. That was a great answer. There you go. Well, going, go going, back, going back to Dad's birthday, is there a good memory that you have, Mom? A favorite memory that you have? Oh, my gosh. Of birthdays in general or just? No, I mean, you can say a few. You can say one that comes to your mind. I can, I can, I can think of a, a very special birthday when I turned 30. Your mom said, we're going to go out to dinner, and it's a surprise. I was like, okay. So we get in the car, and she picks us up on a blindfold, and we're driving around. I was like, where are we going? This is the craziest thing. And then what she had done is she had invited my whole family up, and they were. she was basically driving around until everybody got there got settled, and then we drove back to the house, and that was a surprise. Yeah, it was your surprise, yeah. It was a surprise to have Tiffany and – Sarah Beth, and I think that was all she had at that point because it was yeah. 2001. That was the um, Edinburgh house, yeah. 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 I think sure. my dad, too, was there, wasn't he? No. No, I don't think your dad was. I don't Oh, I don't remember. Yeah, I don't remember either. Maybe he came with that. That was the year God, he came with the 500. that was 20 years ago. That's hard to believe. 19, not quite 20. Yeah. That was the year. Uh, no, that was the summer my dad came up and went to the race. Yeah, because that was the first year we were in Edinburgh. He and Jared came up, and we yeah. went to the 500. That was the <laughs> That was a funny oh God, that's the best story ever. My dad is I don't know if we told the story on the podcast or not, but my dad came up and my younger brother I don't want to say Jared brought his girlfriend too, but I can't remember. Um But uh, anyway, my dad and I there used to be this little bar in downtown Carmel, I don't remember the name of it, they had pool tables and um wasn't it it was attached to the Italian place, wasn't it? Or something. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, we walk in there and we're playing pool and, and Jared and I were just having a few beers. And um, my dad goes over there, and he sits at this table. My dad usually has like wine, some kind of out what of is the it? box. What, no, what is he? Kidding. What's the stuff that he burgundy? That's what he usually drank was burgundy out of a gallon jug. This terrible stuff. But anyway, uh, he starts ordering Irish coffees, and my dad does not drink Irish coffees often. So my dad has one too many or several too many Irish coffees. So we get him back home, and he's sitting at my dining room table and just making this noise, oh. making this noise. And Emily comes up, and she goes, your dad cannot die in my house. <laughs> and then oh, my dad, gosh. and then my dad, we're walking. We go to the race the next day or whenever it was we went. My dad's walking with this limp. You know, he's like, oh, you know. And Jared and I are like, well, what's wrong with dad? Because, you know, we were walk- going to the races. Back then, you had to, you know, you had to walk a ways to get to the track. And he would always, he had his sciatica, and he kept going, it's my sciatic, son. <laughs> <laughs> that was like the, the thing. And it's funny because I had a thing a while back where I was having some trouble with my left leg. And I was like, this cannot happen. I cannot be my dad. There is no way this cannot. Sciatica. So that was, that was a, the oh, one and only time I ever, my dad ever went to the race. But, yeah, Emily coming to me and informing me uh, what could and could not happen that night at the dining room table was memorable. So. Yep, that was funny. That was a funny year. 
Yeah, that was a funny, funny time. Trevor was only, gosh, six months old. Yeah, he was little. Yeah, he was very little at the time. Um, yeah, that was a. Uh, Harrison was little. He was only four. Because uh, Holden didn't come till next year. Yeah, August of two thousand two. Yep. And then it was, life was never the same after that. Well, speaking of Holden, their team made it to semi-state and cross country. Yeah, thank God. Um, the, Great day to run. Yep. Um, first time in school history the boys are going to semi-state, which is awesome. So, How was he explaining? I mean, is it for time? We're hoping that they get out of – no, it's the top so many teams. Oh. Their team, you can get out as an individual, but if your team gets out, then everybody goes. Got it. So um, next week is semi-state, and you have to be the top six team, you know, one of the top six teams. Right. Or, of course, again, you could get out as an individual, but you have to run a certain time. I don't know what it is. So they're all super excited that they are now going to semi-state as a team for the first time in school history. So that's cool. That is cool. I'm always impressed when I go to these races of how fast these kids are, these kids that win it, maybe the top three. It's like, how on earth are you going that fast? They don't even look like they're, they're winded. Yeah. They're just flying. I think the winning time was – I don't think it was sub 15, but it was close. It was like 15, 10 or something like that. Wow. Something nice. I mean, I could be wrong, but it was something crazy. Cause I remember looking at the clock and thinking he's, it won't take him that long to get to the finish line. Right. I think when he passed me, he was like 14, 35, 14, 40. That's crazy. It was a Carmel kid. Yeah. I think Carmel had top six, the top four. I don't know, but Burbuff won the meet by one point. Really? Yep. Well, they had that one kid, Burbuff, that was second. Mm hmm. Which is so funny. You look at these kids. What else is interesting, too? You'll see the runners. You go, if I were to see you on the street, I would not think you were this fast. I just would have no idea. Some of the kids that do really well, you look and you go, okay, I get it. They're like deer. They're just light and just barely touching the ground right. practically. But then some kids are just – and it's, it seems like every season, every you know, all the years we've been watching across country, there's always one or two people. Um, They're just head and shoulders better than everybody else. Yeah. They went about 100 yards. Yeah. It's just nuts how, how – I mean – the pack, they left the pack long ago in that race. Yeah. So, well, I have to give a shout out to the girls, too. They made it semi state. And okay. then also to um, Evelyn Bastard, who won the game winning goal uh, for the girls' Garen Girls soccer team. Yeah. Um, they are going to uh, advance as well. That's great. So, they have never won the soccer state title at Garen, and they have a chance to win it. They so they're going are going to semi state? Super pumped. Um, I don't know if that's what they call it in soccer. I can't remember. It's just the next. I feel like it's the same. They play. They they are next Saturday, so it's like semi state, and then states the next week. So it's basically the quarterfinal. The yeah last four. It's just it's going to be awesome if she wins. Yeah. So um, yeah, a pretty exciting, pretty exciting fall sports. Yeah. I told her when right so she was at dinner yesterday. I was like, listen, if anyone wants an autograph, charge, <laughs> not for free. You're a commodity now. Oh goodness! So, yeah, it's cool to see the kids succeed and do well and get those those small successes under their belt, those small wins, and move on to the next next win. So, yep, absolutely. See, when I was in high school, the win was just a finish. <laughs> when I ran cross country, there was no we didn't know. In fact, we were so our school was so small and and lacking in athletic funds. I think they passed out the singlets when you got to the race, and they took them back at the end of the race. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's what they did. <laughs> Oh my god. We didn't have matching shorts or anything. I think my my shoes I had to borrow from my buddy. I didn't even have any running shoes. I had to borrow from my friend that we ran. So it was just we were just there you to guys finish. Had to have run. That's probably were you running three miles? I think a five K. You were I, running a five K then? So I think. three miles. But yeah, we ran and we trained. I remember it was my coach. Our coach was a runner, a good guy, Coach Roberts. Um he we ran on uh the road the whole time. All of our training was like going to U T and the hills and stuff but it was all on concrete so we get to the race where you're running we went to melton hill down that was our first we passed that mm -hmm. on the way to kingston and it was you go up this huge hill and then turn around and come down and it was like this Ugh. is not oh yeah. this is a tough one old fella so uh so yeah that was uh, my cross country experience was um we were just there to finish that was it i don't think we had any girls running it was just like four or five dudes that were running that was it huh because there was a bunch of people that showed them and started running and they just slowly kind of stopped showing up yeah. And me and I think it was like five other guys. I think the team picked up after that because I remember going over there once and they had a lot more guys um, running. But when we ran, it was I think it was just the seniors running because that was the first year they had the cross-country team. They didn't have a lot of sports. I went to school, though. All right. A lot of um, that track, of course, and things like that. But 
the girls really only had softball and I think volleyball or basketball. Right. But that was it. Um, what was I going to say? You um, brought up the rear in my high school, every, pretty much every sport. You brought up the rear, is that yeah. what you said? Yeah, we were the punching <laughs> bag. Um, one thing I should mention, this is off topic, but it made me think about it with Lisa's question um, in regards to veterinary medicine. Um, we have seen a ton of kennel cough. Really? Yes. Why, I wonder. Um, we, I don't know if it's just kennel cough season with everybody traveling or doing a little bit of like daycares with, you know, maybe they're back and kids are back in school or people are traveling more with work or working more, mm. you know, wait, I don't know, or the dogs are spending more time in daycares or places like that are opening up more or I don't know, but we have seen a ton of kennel cough. Hmm. So, um, you know, we're trying to tell people, Hey, you know, be aware of that, you know, in case one, you see those symptoms at home, which present is like coughing, right. but then also, um, uh, if you have younger or immunocompromised animals, um, animals you don't want getting sick, then avoid those like doggy kind mm. of areas. Um, cause we've been seeing a ton of it, like two or three cases a day. Wow. Kind of thing. And you know, the most common question we get is like, well, my dog's been vaccinated against Bordetella, kennel cough. My dog's, my, my dog's been protected against kennel cough, but that's just Bordetella, which is one mm. factor that causes kennel cough, one disease, one bacteria that causes kennel cough. There's lots of others. So how do you get your dog to, in, in the age of COVID, how do you get the dog to cough or sneeze into their elbow? <laughs> <laughs> he thinks he's so funny. <laughs> You did. You saw it coming. <laughs> that's, that's so funny. Uh, you're going to tell the dogs to wear masks too, probably. Dog, yeah. That'll last about two seconds. Oh, my gosh. And you got a lot of obstruction. No, so that is one of the things they ask, though, is like, why is my dog getting kennel cough when they've been vaccinated? Well, they've been vaccinated against Bordetella, which is one of the more common pathogens. But right. just like in people, you can get a cold for various other reasons. So I'd be surprised if it was going to daycare. Say what? So I'd be surprised if it's because, like, increased daycare traffic there's got to be something some some little some factor that's going on i don't know why we'll see it we'll see a flush of it like when um Maybe people the going holidays to dog like july 4th is always a really popular time we end up seeing kennel huh. kennel like after the holiday or before like after you know really? after they've all been boarded right. like you know summer travel and stuff like that and we really didn't see that this year because i think everybody was restricted on where right. they were going but then in the past two weeks it's just been a ton of it hmm. so that's interesting anyway yeah it's interesting to see. To yeah, see that, so be be on the lookout. The symptoms are coughing and hacking. A lot of people will say my dog's vomiting because they bring up like white phlegm, but they're really not vomiting. They're just coughing so hard that they bring up some spit and phlegm and stuff. What do you do to treat it? Antibiotics and cough suppressants. Okay, cool. So, and it usually goes away in like seven to ten days. Hmm. So, but That's they cool. are contagious while they're coughing. So, there's that. So if you have multiple dogs in a household, do you treat them all? Not unless they get sick. Because some of them will get it and some of them won't. Oh, got it. Yeah. So what is that about natural immunity? What? What? <laughs> what? Does that sound like a Wait, familiar? we're going to banned. We're going to pull from Facebook. Does that sound like a familiar conversation? Don't post oh. that to Twitter. So, um, no, some of the dogs in a household, we don't treat the dog unless it comes down with symptoms. Got it. So. Cool. Yeah. Good to know. Very good to know. And there is not really a test for it case anybody wants to know that there is for bordetella i mean you can run a respiratory pcr test to see what pathogen it is mm -hmm. but we never do that because usually we don't know it doesn't necessarily help us to know which pathogen it is right. right off the bat so we usually just treat the patients empirically and then see how their response to therapy lisa <laughs> said do dogs do cough drops lol <laughs> they use we use what we call actually yeah that's kind of funny because we use um uh, this product called cough tabs which are guanfenacin and dextromorphan. Oh. So the same products that are in some of the cough tabs that you have over the counter or cough syrup or cough, whatever. Man, those over the counter things never work for me. Like the Ricola's and all that never worked. I just, I, I, I want the old NyQuil back. Mercy Kretz. Oh God. Yeah. Secrets. My mom used to like give us a tray of secrets and be like, here you go. <laughs> it's like turns your mouth numb. <laughs> you don't cough because you can't feel anything. Oh, they used to have God. this stuff, the those spray. Those were the sore throat things. Yeah. They were those little things. They were all individually wrapped. Yeah, that had to have been foil. like, yeah, like so non, um, like economical. Like every single one was wrapped in yeah. a single little thing. I remember there was Ludens. Those yeah. were like candy. Those yeah. were really. And then you had Sucrets. 
were like the hardcore stuff. And they had this some spray that I remember when I was a kid, like a 1980 or 79. Oh, yeah, you could spray it in the back of your throat. Yeah, it was like an analgesic yeah. for sore throat. Yeah, we can't tell dogs to open up. All right, say, spray oh, it in there. Spray it. Yeah. So, but yeah, that was, uh, we date ourselves. I, you know, something else that I remember too, I was giving Calvin some uh, medicine, I think, when we were in Tennessee. Oh, look, there's secrets. Do they still make That's them? It. They must still make them. Um, and I was looking, he goes, what flavor is it? And I was like, do you remember as a kid, there was no asking what flavor it was. It just you choked it down, whatever it, whatever it was. Yeah. Oh, gosh, too funny. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, that's, uh, yeah, we date ourselves when we start talking about that stuff and medicines. And I remember going to the dentist. You probably remember this, too. There was no safety back then. They didn't put gloves on. No nothing. No face shields. I don't shields. remember if they wore gloves or not. I mean, I'm sure they did. Mine didn't. When I was a little kid, and they used to... I remember I hated it because you would go and they would, they would put have these two trays and they would fill it with fluoride or whatever. You'd stick it in your mouth, and for ten minutes or whatever, and you'd invariably swallow it, and it gave you the worst stomach ache. And it was they were like, "What flavor do you want?" It's like it doesn't matter. I'm gonna feel like terrible after this is over. And then then they started just doing the the brush. They just brush it on. Yeah, brush it on. And you rinse it off, and that's it. Yeah. So yeah, those are the days. In fact, I, um, you know, I still use my dentist that I used when I was a kid. Yeah. So uh, I give a shout out to Dr. Bozick. He's awesome. And all the ladies at Bozick Dentistry. Who was there? Was there anybody that was there when you were a kid? Oh, wow. His wife, um, maybe. I'm trying to think. Um, Pam. Pam been there? She's been there a long? Maybe Pam. You're joking. No, maybe. I don't know. She's I can't been there remember. since you were in high school. Well, I don't remember. But you guys moved back here in 81? Yeah. Because the connection we have, her dad, her dad, your dad, Steve grew up with. Yeah, with Don. Yeah. Wow. And so then when we moved to Carmel, then dad found Don, you know, they, yeah. I'm sure, communicated, you know, with each other all through the time or whatever. And then, because um, they ran around together. Yeah. And when they were kids in Hallville. And then um, we just started going there. And then. I went there all the way through high school, all the way through college, he's been, all the way through. I did the numbers and then, once, and I or I was there and I saw his diploma on the wall. I think he's been practicing dentistry since '66. That could be. I, I mean, was like, oh my god! Yeah, he's he is a wealth of knowledge. He stays current with the times. Yeah, he does. He practices current <clears throat> medicine. Um, he's great with the kids. He's I mean, just he's not over. He's not like. Um, you know, I think with a lot of the dentistry practice, the tech not like they, they've gone into this like hyper niche, right. like technical kind of thing. And he's, he's, um, he still does it. Yeah. The, he, he still does orthodontics and yeah. everything. I mean, but he's kept, but he's current, oh, yeah. you know, in yeah, terms yeah. of the techniques and everything. So it's, uh, it's been fun to watch him and then how he's now, you know, starting to phase himself out and retire right. and do think, you know what I mean? Getting heading towards retirement and how he's handling that for his own business. It's fascinating um, when you go to his office, to it's too, because it's it's this building was, it's like a throwback to the 70s. The yeah. decor, I mean, everything's yeah. kind of the same. Yeah. Um, it's really cool. I've always been very pleased with what he, what he was able to do with the kids. And, oh, yeah. And, to, you know, to keep But their, I think that's so fascinating because you, I'm sure he has my file from when I was Johnny's age, sixth yeah. grade, right? Oh, you know, you're way younger than so that. So I was sixth grade, right. And so now he's got all my kids. You could start going and to so sixth like grade. so it's like fascinating. Yeah, sixth grade. So good lord, it's like eighty. Yeah, eighty one or eighty two. Yeah, and so then now he's got all of our kids, which I think is so cool. Like, what a neat thing for him. It's kind of similar for us when clients come in, and then we see the clients' kids, dogs. Oh right, right. You know what I mean? Yeah, and yeah. So then you develop this tree. You actually start to know families. Yeah. Because you know the siblings in the family and their pets, and then you have the parents' pets, and so it's. I've often wanted to do this like tree this family tree thing of all-star oh yeah where like you know this person who knows this person yeah. who knows it and it, it, the connections are uncanny it's crazy yeah the amount of people that are all interconnected you know one of my favorite things is somebody coming in the clinic and then seeing somebody they know oh yeah and being able to visit with the person that they know at the clinic you know what i mean it's, yeah. such a, it's such a neat thing i i wonder how he my i wonder things. how he did that where he he just kind of left it that same size and just never brought on an associate or anything just kind of yeah. Left at that as a single guy, I mean, single practitioner, which is, you know, somewhat, I mean, probably counter to what happens mostly today because people grow, yeah. they add associates and right. additional staff members and continue to grow like that. That's yeah, cool. That's very cool. Yeah. It's, I was, I've always been, like I said, very impressed with his expertise and he's always wonderful with the kids and 
I, I very, very much trust his judgment. If he recommends something, we always do it. Yeah. Um, so it's good to have that kind of that kind of relationship with somebody such that their credibility is high enough to where you can you'll always listen to them. Well, and it was interesting because we were in there last week or a week ago with Calvin and he was Calvin's got like these three freaking extra teeth. He's like, this is crazy. He's got three extra teeth. And he showed me the extra. He's like, he's not supposed to have these teeth. They're not supposed to be there. And he's like, you know, so we're going to, you know, surgically remove them. I'm going to send you. And it was fascinating because I'm going to send you to Bojarab, who's actually was a client of mine. Like he was a kid. Right. Became then a then he's aged out and now is practicing <clears throat> medicine, which I'm like, that is so cool. Like how cool is that for him that yeah. he has somebody that, you know, uh, and so I was like, that's really neat. That must be a cool feeling. To- we, gen- we genuinely drew the short straw on dental health with my kids. <laughs> Spent a fortune. You want college uh, or straight teeth? You decide. Yeah, exactly. Uh, no, they're not, not quite, but it's close. But yeah, he makes the yeah he makes everybody's mouths look awesome. Yeah, Trevor. Yeah, he just yeah, it's wonderful. Yeah, I remember when we started all that stuff with Trevor, the expansion of the upper palate or whatever. Yeah. He showed me before and after pictures. He goes, "It's going to look wonderful once this is finished." But you have to create this room, right? And it was really cool because Trevor looks great. His bite's great. Yeah, it's so it's, yeah, it's really neat. Yeah, it's neat stuff to watch happen over time. And what they can do to counter your basically what your what your How your, you your with, cards. Yeah. yeah, you know, you yeah. can create that you know that environment. So to it's improve cool. your health, yeah, pretty cool. So. Okay, so as we wrap up, yep. Um, should we give everyone a little bit of entertainment and let them watch the Calvin the short clip? Sure. So they have some entertainment for the week. Calvin, give backstory. Calvin will say, "Dad, can I see your phone?" And I'm like, "Hey, I go. He's watching something, doing something." But what he does is, and he goes into stealth mode and he tapes himself doing these videos and then posts them. And so that's what this is. That's where we get it from. Okay. And do you have any other plans for the rest of your birthday? No, uh, we're going to have a couple meetings here. I've got to go and wrap up homeschool with Calvin. Uh, the words are super easy this week. Thank God. So, um, yeah, it's going to be great. We have to do some things there. I'm going to, I want to, I'm watching this barbecue show that I'm really liking that I want Emily to watch with me. Um, it's a barbecue showdown show. And um, that's it. It's a rainy day, kind of cold. So it's a good day to sit around and do not do much. Nothing. Yeah. There we have it. Okay. So that's the plan for today. Yep. Your birthday's coming up too soon, too. It is. End of the month. End of the month. Be 46. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> and I'm sticking to it. Perpetually 46. Okay. You got it? Okay. We will have to um, dig Never. out some other videos to provide some humor and entertainment. His hair. What do you do with hair? Okay. I, who knows? He probably slicked it back or something. So here's your guys' entertainment for the week. Draw your age with your nose. <laughs> Let's see who can do that, Richard. That's right, on your birthday. Can you draw your age with your nose? Probably not. Not Probably as well as that. not as well as that is what I'm guessing. That takes talent, and I'm proud of you for teaching him such amazing things. Yeah. yeah Thanks for all boy. your hard work. Today we're doing – this is a funny Calvin story. Today we're doing math. He's doing borrowing, right? And he goes – it was like – I don't know, 96 minus 34. And you have to decide, look in the ones column, if the number, the upper number is lower than the, 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 you have to borrow. So he was messing up totally. And he was like 315. I was like, dude, you can't have more than what you started with. 96 minus 34 can't possibly be 31, 314. And what he was doing was going like, you know, 21 minus five. I was like, oh my God, this is okay. So anyway. Oh God. Or actually, actually what he was doing was he was saying, it was like, he was saying 19 minus three. So in the ones column, he had like 17 and then, and then three. He, the, the three like, so oh my three. God. Yeah, exactly. So. All right, everybody. We'll wrap it up here for the week. Um, don't forget to check us out most Mondays around 1030 or so um, for uh, five boys in a business. Don't forget to check out ASVCMerch.com. I'm Emily King. I'm Richie King. And we'll see you next week. We're Have out. a good week.